Hey everyone, welcome back. So we're gonna start by reading the last two lines. A blood smear shows schistocytes. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step in management? As I read this word schistocytes, I know the only thing that possibly causes this is microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, which means the red blood cells are sheared because of thrombosis taking place inside vessels. So we need to remember all the differentials of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia in our head. And then I like to read next the answer choices, which help guide me to what topic this question is talking about. So here I can see that the answer choices, platelet transfusion, dexamethasone, ursodeoxycholic acid, labetalol, or immediate delivery, or betamethasone magnesium sulfate. From the answer choices, guys, I can see that this is an obstetrics question. And so what do you think causes microangiopathic hemolytic anemia in obstetrics? It's either one of two, either DIC or HELP syndrome. So let's see after that, read the investigations. So investigations here confirm that there is hemolysis taking place. Hemoglobin is low. There is anemia. This is hemolytic anemia. Platelet count is low. Bilirubin is very high. We do not know whether this is because of hemolysis or because of liver injury. What we can see here in front of us, guys, is high elevated liver enzymes. So hemolysis, low platelet count, elevated liver enzymes. What do you think this is? It must be HELP syndrome. So we already diagnosed, guys, without even finishing or reading the vignette. So what's happening here is because of the thrombosis inside this woman, it's shearing the blood, the red blood cells, leading to hemolysis and anemia, which increases total bilirubin. Plus, when this thrombosis happens in the vessels leading to the liver, it's going to lead to ischemia and elevated liver enzymes. So let's start now reading the vignette. We've already reached the diagnosis, guys. However, our answer choice, which is the next step in management, will depend on this woman's gestational age. Now, even though HELP syndrome is usually managed by immediate delivery, regardless of gestational age, if the mother is in distress, yet we can still conserve if the mother's case or status allows if the baby is still premature or before lung maturity. So let's see, here is a 35-year-old woman, gravida 1, para O, at 35 weeks gestation. Now I know the correct answer, guys, without finishing. If she's beyond fetal lung maturity, then yes, we're going to deliver her immediately. Now, all the rest of the vignette is just confirming, guys, our diagnosis and our management that we already know. So here she's complaining of abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting, of course, because she's having hepatitis, like there is ischemic liver causes abdominal pain and vomiting. Vitals show hypertension because this is a variant of preeclampsia. Then examination reveals right upper quadrant tenderness consistent with liver injury, fundal height, which is a routine examination in obstetrics 36, consistent with her weeks of gestation, as long as it's within two centimeters or two fingers, this is fine. And fetal heart rate is normal. So this is confirming, again, the diagnosis of HELP syndrome. With the typical picture, hemolysis, elevated liver enzymes, low platelet count. And we know that since this woman is beyond 34 weeks gestation, beyond the time of fetal lung maturity, the only correct answer is immediate delivery. Otherwise, we risk the mother's life because of all the complications of HELP syndrome, similar to those of preeclampsia. This woman is suffering liver cell failure. All right, now let's see why the other answer choices are incorrect. So for example, why not platelet transfusion? 
number one, the, the platelet count, this is like the low platelet count is not the only problem of HELP syndrome, right? It's just one of the problems because of consumption of platelets, right? And the another problem is thrombosis that can take place in the liver, can take place in the brain, anywhere in her body, including the placenta, causing placental abruption and fetal death, right? So it's unwise to just give platelet transfusion and leave the woman like this, suffering liver cell failure, plus the threshold for platelet transfusion in someone who's bleeding is 50,000, below 50,000. If someone is not bleeding, below 20,000. In this woman, the platelet count was 60,000, which is above the threshold for platelet transfusion. So this is incorrect. Next, why not just give her dexamethasone? Remember, guys, the role of corticosteroids in obstetrics is to accelerate fetal lung maturity in someone or woman who's expected to deliver prematurely. However, we know that beyond 34 weeks gestation, the fetal lungs are already mature and there is no need to give corticosteroids. And of course, I'm not going to give dexamethasone and just wait and see this woman in such severe case. So this is another incorrect answer choice. Number three, or so deoxycholic acid. Remember, guys, this is a bile acid, which is usually given in conditions of intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy. But with intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy, there is no hemolysis. Essentially, it's only cholestasis. There is, yes, some elevation of liver enzymes. There is elevated bilirubin. However, it's not an emergency condition that we need immediate delivery. Here we give ursodeoxycholic acid in patients with intrahepatic cholestasis to improve absorption of fat and act like bile acids simply because this woman cannot throw bile into her intestines. So we're giving something similar to bile acids. This is not the treatment here, guys. This woman has HELP syndrome, not intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy. D says labetalol. Labetalol, guys, is the antihypertensive of choice in pregnancy in general, and especially with preeclampsia. Now, again, even though this woman has hypertension, treating the blood pressure solely, ignoring other features this patient has, HELP syndrome, guys, is because of the placenta. If you remove the placenta, this woman is going to improve, which means I have to deliver. Simply giving symptomatic treatment, platelets for her low platelets or antihypertensive for the high blood pressure will not treat the condition. She's still in danger because of the thrombosis taking place inside her vessels. Giving an antihypertensive is only symptomatic management. Finally, beta methadone and magnesium sulfate. This is the same idea here as if you're caring for the fetus only. Beta methadone is given to accelerate lung maturity only if the baby is below 34 weeks gestation and magnesium sulfate is a neuroprotective agent given for premature babies expected to be delivered below 32 weeks gestation, right? So it's neuroprotective to prevent cerebral palsy and stuff like that, increasing blood flow to the fetal brain however in our case here she is beyond 30 she's 35 weeks gestation beyond the age of fetal maturity and beyond the age where we recommend magnesium sulfate so neither of these answer choices guys is correct